At its best, television brand design is an art form unto itself. Beyond just the day-to-day -day needs of channel identification, television branding has a unique opportunity to represent a channel, evoking emotions and utilizing visual aesthetics to subtly communicate everything you'd need to know about what you're watching, or what you could come to watch. Brand design is a little appreciated art, especially in the US, where some channels seem to bend, or break, their design guides to fit the whims of the programming, rather than reinforce the network. Looking at you, Viacom CBS. Other channels, however, understand the power and potential of this art, especially internationally. They use this potential not just for brand reinforcement, but also to make the television viewing experience more attractive and enjoyable in the process. Welcome to Rebrand Review, a new format where I give television brand design the appreciation and examination it deserves. I have picked a somewhat ambitious first subject for this new format, a sprawling international television brand. This isn't going to be the most straightforward review, as untraditional as the concept already is, but I'm up for the challenge, so let's dive in. AXN is an international television brand owned by Sony Pictures Television, the distribution and broadcasting arm of Guess Which Conglomerate. Through feeds spanning across over 60 territories, the channel specializes in drama series and films with an action bent. Additionally, in some markets, it airs some reality and lifestyle series. Overall, think of something like an edgier USA, or maybe a TNT, but not as hoity-toity and ambitious as FX. In most of the markets in which AXN exists, it's Sony's main television brand, though in some it plays second fiddle to their main journalist brand, Sony Channel. In October 2019, the geometry of the channel was rebranded as Sony AXN, and we'll get to that part in detail later. Throughout much of its existence, AXN wasn't exactly the flashiest or most stunning-looking channel out there. I think we need a bit of a baseline, so let's take an extra step back and look at their brand design from the early 2010s. This item came in around 2012. It's an evolution of the brand package they had prior, which was introduced around 2011. There are two big changes between them, bringing the rotating diagonal pillar motif based on the axe and the then-current logo front and center, and changing the arcs on-air typeface from ITC avant-garde to the ubiquitous Gotham. In my opinion, avant-garde is a font that can be a challenge to make look good, and in my opinion, despite working just fine in previous designs of theirs, it wasn't really doing any favors to the rest of the graphics here. Especially not in the variant they made where the top corner of the lettering was cut off. Ugh. The AXN logo itself also gets a bit of shine, making the really awkwardly constructed logo type, seemingly two different weights of Futura sent through a taffy machine and then one bar of the axe extended further and all horizontally off center to boot, look a little better. Color-wise, black, white, and red, the network's main color scheme for ages, now get relatively equal play. Black now gets a bigger role compared to the previous look. Beyond the logo, I actually really like the look and execution of this package. The pillar background is nice and glossy, and actually, upon a closer look, I think those pillars are triangular, which ties into the logo a little further, and the animation of elements on screen is connected to a diagonal grid created from the edges of the bars as they animate in. Plus, Gotham looks great on screen as it always does. It's actually really slick and pretty well thought out, which was not the takeaway I was expecting to have while I was looking into all this. In 2015, AXN pulled off a total rebrand of their network, and... Well, I think the items speak for themselves. Now that is an ident for an action channel. This design could kick me in the pants and I'd still say thank you. The 2015 AXN package breaks with precedence, and that includes trashing the previous logo the Nerk has had in some form or another since its inception. I guess you can't add gloss forever. This isn't Brazil, which seemingly latched onto the 80s and never looked back. The new AXN logo finally resolves some of the awkwardness of the last logo with the word mark leaning into the diagonals and forcing the end to fall in line. The bomb opening, however, creates a space for a small pyramidal shape whose faces and sides set up the direction for the rest of the brand. The main graphical element is an assortment of red pyramids flying around and crashing into each other. If there's something I still have a design weak spot for, it's a bunch of things flying around on vague backgrounds, and the AXN look delivers that in spades. On your choice of layer dark background to boot! The dark still continues to use Gotham, though now they've shifted to using its lighter weights exclusively. It runs the risk of posing a readability issue on each channel's standard definition feeds, but I'm not too worried. The transitions into full-screen graphical elements such as end boards come in two flavors, one coming from the bottom center, creating the pyramid shape on screen as it heads up, or a diamond transition pushing outwards. The end boards themselves are relatively simple in setup. Start with the background, add diamond to the middle for the tune-in information, add in show entry as desired. 
text is centered on screen at all times. There's a heavy sense of layering throughout the package, though visual flair is actually pretty restrained. The only thing you can really point out is their regular usage of Gaussian blurs, but that's it. The coming up next bumpers use the A in the logo and expand it out into a full screen element, with program details in the gap below with a small triangle anchoring the bottom. The triangle and the cutout form into the A when the logo animates in at the end of the bumper. Overall, everything feels pretty streamlined, thought out, and up to par. There are only a few things I really question as to whether or not they work, like the This Week primetime promos. The rerun was also expanded into AXN spin-off channels. Female skewing AXN white, male skewing AXN black, no that's not racist, youth leaning AXN spin in Central and Eastern Europe, AXN sci-fi in Italy, the now defunct Last Stand from an AXN spin-off outlets were thematic, AXN movies, self-explanatory formerly in Canada and now in Portugal, and the Japan exclusive AXN mystery. Each side channel has its own color scheme. The two gendered outlets use gold as an accent to the color in their name, AXN spin is largely turquoise, AXN movies is purple, and AXN mystery is blue. Besides having their own idents, the side channels largely use the same styling as the main AXN channel. My only major qualm with the sub-brands is that the names all use this god-awful typeface Harabara. Someone had the bright idea to take Helvetica and chop off random corners haphazardly and call it a font. It just looks bad. Honestly, I think it's one of the worst looking typefaces that's ever been used in brand design, right up there with Sansation. Ugh. AXN's use of it here just cheapens the brand for no real reason. I mean, it doesn't even match with the rest of the look. You're already paying for the licenses to several weights of Gotham. Watch one more so you can make the logos of your side channels look decent. Look at how much better and more professional this looks. Why did you not just do this? <sighs> this look is still used in the majority of the territories AXN airs in, though there are some exceptions. Italy got a different set of items than the rest of the world got, and in early 2020, the Portuguese feed launched a rebrand, which included new items and graphics. The graphics look fine, albeit kind of generic, and I don't think I fully understand what the idents are going for. Maybe it's sort of a stopgap thing before the Sony AXN relaunch, or maybe the cohesive global rebrand is just falling apart. There are a lot of bits and pieces involved here, but I've tried my best to shape this into one coherent story. And that story takes us, finally, to Germany, where, as I mentioned earlier, the channel was rebranded to Sony AXN in October 2019. There's not too much that's come out about this rebrand, but there are a few things we can look at. One of them is the new ident. I feel like I know what they're going for, but they don't really do it. Sony AXN's ident is far more subdued than the energetic sea grippers that came immediately before it. It feels sort of like a downgrade at first, but I'd argue it's more of a return to form after a few years away. Sort of a return back to the kinds of looks AXN had prior to the 2015 rebrand. It feels like the edge has been taken off, both metaphorically and literally thanks to the new logo, which kills the stylings of both the 2015 AXN logo and its processor in favor of a straight wordmark, set in a stretched out version of Gotham Black and placed into Sony's new-ish holding shape, first introduced with the rebranding of Sony Crackle in 2018 and then the rebrand of the aforementioned Sony channel earlier in the fall. Usually I'd be miffed about stretched out fonts, given I feel there's a reason why they were designed how they were, but this one works well enough that I had to actually check on a hunch to confirm the type was skewed. The idea itself isn't really that captivating, though. Neon lights and panels create a hallway of sorts that leads to the form up of the Sony AXN logo. That's really all there is to it. No metaphor or explanation or bigger thing at play. It's more than competently done, but I would be kinda pissed if this ident kicked me in the pants. The new slogan, at least for the German feed, is Willkommen in Bad Boys Club, which means, literally, Welcome to the Bad Boys Club. It's meant to be in reference to the kinds of programming Sony XN airs. To me, this doesn't feel like the kind of place bad boys would hang out. Maybe a secret criminal enterprise, sure, but not bad boys. The network trailer does only a slightly better job at selling the channel than the ident does, which wasn't a question I even had to look for an answer to with the 2015 package. Though perhaps this does a better job than the image trailer from the 2015 package, which even included an original song. Are you brave enough? Yeah, I'm brave. What little we get to see of the promo graphics looks decent enough. Program tuning information is contained in a heavily Gaussian blurred rounded square, which appears to have just the slightest bevel to it to make it look more 3D, and loosely kerned Gotham listing out the actual details. It looks pretty fine. The lower thirds during the promos are simple enough, though I will say that they'll have to make sure they give the text layouts enough padding from the edge of the square. It all looks fine. The trouble is, when you go from stunning to fine, that's a big dip. 
But again, it's arguably a return to how AXN, or Sony AXN as it now is in Germany, used to look. It was never the most visually breathtaking channel to begin with, so this is just coming back to that. If we jumped straight from the 2012 look to this one, I doubt I'd be complaining so much. But the 2015 package showed that this channel can look great in the right hands. So why would I want to go back to just passable? Honestly, I'd argue that even the 2012 package was a little flashier than this one. To be fair to them, this look does pair pretty well with the new look for Sony Channel, which arrived in the German feed of that network around the same time. Most of those items look similarly fine and decent, though I feel the one with the blocks looks super chintzy. However, it appears there could have been more to Sony AXN's look, as stills from two potential items were posted by one of the designers to design gallery website Behance. The two items show the glitchy makings of a crime and a series of glass panels flipping around to create the Sony AXN logo. I feel that both of these designs easily speak for themselves and will have looked amazing on screen on HD feeds of the channel all over the world. These two explorations keep up the stunning, gripping design and arresting looks that made the 2015 graphics package look so epic on screen. I mean, look at the details on these! Just the panel's ident alone shows how something really simple can look incredible with the right hands on the team. So if this was something they were thinking about, how did we end up with this? How design agencies and the broadcasters they work with come to their conclusions is something that's just a little beyond me. But I feel like these concepts really show what brand design for television, at its best and most beautiful, can really be and look like. Stuff like this could have easily set the stage for gripping, arresting, action-packed drama series. Now, however, the brand package that's actually airing will have to work that much harder. I'd argue that the Sony AXN rebrand will expand to more of the channel's feeds throughout 2020 and into 2021. They've gotten the major Sony channel feeds onto that channel's new look, so I can only assume this one is next. It's not that I don't like this rebrand. It looks alright and there aren't any glaring problems with it. I just feel like they could have done better, given what they were coming from. It just needed the right concept and the right execution to push it beyond its utilitarian purpose as channel identification, and it really turn it into a piece of moving art. If Sony AXN is the bad boy in this situation, I'd argue the bad boy has been tamed, and they don't have much backstory beyond their pretty face. Remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss the next episode of this new series, plus you get more explorations from the world of television every single week. While you're here, you can check out more stuff from me up here or down in the description. I'm Benzie Johnson Jr., I'm enthusiastic about television, and I'll see you next time.